Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. Joined by Justin Rogers. Uh, Wednesday's off in the, the big injury update. Justin uh, coming off uh, the previous game um, and team returned to practice today. Uh, Adrian Waddle was back. What do you make of, of his return to the mix and, and how much he could mean to the offense? You know, he was he was still a limited participant today. You know, the, the game status for Waddle is, is to be determined, but if they could get him back, I think it'd be a really big deal. Uh, Lions have definitely faced a lot more pass rush pressure. Matthew Stafford, obviously, the, the guy taking the beating there. Yeah. Uh, he's absorbed seven sacks already this year. He had 22 all of last year. Four of those sacks have come uh, at, as the fault of the right tackle spot. In his early or young career, later in Waddle has yet to give up a sack in a regular season game. So that's that's a big difference, and, and the Lions need that. And they also need him as a run blocker. You know, They like to run behind Larry Warford. That, that tandem was very effective last year, and... The run game has still not been great this year. They've run when it mattered in the fourth quarter, but during the rest of the course of the game, they need Waddle in there to give push to that right side. Yeah, that's been a big difference for the for the, for the team. It's not just that they're running poorly to the right side, it's that they actually have gone away from running to the right side, which has been their bread and butter behind Warford. That's a big difference. And you mentioned it with Stafford. He's been knocked around quite a bit, even against, even against the Packers last week when he wasn't getting sacked. He was still under duress on a lot of those plays and had to hang in there pretty tough to, to, to make some of the plays that he did. Um, flipping around to the defense, uh, we did see a practice today to hear Whitehead is, is getting the, the, the first shot at replacing Stephen Tulloch in the middle of, middle linebacker. And I think that's a pretty big um, a, a pretty big change, right? I mean, Tulloch's been in that spot every single game for every single start since 2011. And now you're, you're replacing him with a guy who's played zero snaps at middle linebacker <laughs> you know, up until, up until last week. Right. Um, and last week we saw mostly DeAndre Levy in the middle. But I think that was mostly just trying to get through the game as, as smoothly as possible. Um, so they moved Levy there. They're going to leave Levy at the, at the weak side. And I understand the temptation to put Levy in the middle because he's he's your best linebacker now, and the middle spot is so important with directing traffic. Uh, you're, you're closer to, to more plays, um, so you'd be positioning your best linebacker to, to be closer to the action. But at the same time, I think it's just a matter of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, well, Levy's been so good at that weak side spot, back in coverage, um, in the backfield, and I think they, they just they want to let him um, have some consistency there and to continue to play as he has for the you know past year plus at a Pro Bowl level. Yeah, I, I advocated the other day when we talked moving Levy to the middle. I, I think his skill set would have opened up some things given his ability to cover and come forward um, at, a, at an elite level. But I get the Lions' logic. You know, Levy has had a fantastic yep. stretch as the weak side linebacker. Um, the, the outside linebackers often left more on an island with coverage, as Caldwell explained it. And, and Levy's their best guy there. You mm -hmm. don't want to take away something that's worked so well for so long. So they're going to roll with Whitehead. It's it's a really, you know, interesting progression for him. He never played a defensive snap under Schwartz. Kind of got an opportunity. He went from a fifth linebacker, outplayed Ashley Palmer in training camp. Van Noy got went down, so he, he moved into a starting spot. But... Even then, you know, four snaps in the opener because Lions are still a yep. nickel-heavy team. Yep. Now he's coming to the field every single snap for this entire game, and that's that's fascinating. This is a big opportunity for him to make an impact, and, you know, he's not Stephen Tulloch, but if he can hold down the fort in the way some of the other guys have, it, it's a big bonus for the Lions and how they've developed talent. His rise has been really fascinating. I remember seeing him at uh, the last two days of mandatory minicamp. Stephen Tulloch was, was gone for, fan, for uh, personal reasons, and so we saw... Uh, Tier Whitehead was the guy repping with the the first team at middle linebacker. I think that was a shock to all of us. I remember actually going up to, to Whitehead and being like, "Like, what's up? Like, why why are you the guy who's playing in the middle?" Just because that's something that we hadn't expected. He, he's so good on special teams, but we hadn't played. We hadn't we hadn't seen him factor into the defensive uh, uh, alignment at all. And then all of a sudden he was there, and obviously now we know why because he's he's played so well. He's really impressed his coaching staff. They love what he brings, but he's not. Tulloch and he's going to lack experience he's going to make mistakes I think that can be expected and it's just going to be a matter of, of the defensive line in front of him Le Levy alongside him um, you know Quinn and Machine behind him uh, Rasheen Mathis um, to, to kind of cover for him to help him to guide him along and to cover for the mistakes when they do occur and, and speaking of the secondary Cassius Vaughn still out you know that leaves Danny Gore still playing that nickel spot with uh, Mohamed Cisse backing him up and then James Ahedebo back as a full participant today we haven't seen him do that since the start of the regular season uh, Issa Abdul-Kadus has, has played very well in his stead but you know if 
if Ahedabo's neck responds to this practice and he's a full participant again tomorrow, I think we'll see him start and make his debut for the Lions this I'll week against the Jets. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> when yeah, it comes to Ahedabo, sure. it's, it's, a, it's a curious case with him because he's practiced for the, the past two, uh, two or maybe even all two three weeks. weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The past two weeks he's practiced, but he's not played. Uh, he was limited in those practices, but still it's odd to see a guy practice a full week and then not play on Sunday, let alone in back-to-back -back weeks to, to practice for two full weeks and to appear in neither of those games. <laughs> he is a full participant, so we'll see what happens. The Lions could certainly use him. The Jets aren't great offensively, but at the same time, they have taken on a lot of injuries, so the more bodies you can get back to, the better. Yeah, full, ter full participant, to me, tells me he's taken contact today. Uh, he's been cleared for some level of contact, and, and they'll see how he responds to that. So, yeah, yeah I mean, we'll, we'll wait and see, but really good sign for him. So we've got uh, lots more coming this week. Uh, Lions, will, Lions will be back on the practice field at 2 p.m. Thursday. We'll be there. Uh, for Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Mikey. We are MLive. Keep it right here.